Hello everyone, this is Dr. Jerry Paleo, and I'd like to welcome you to this mini webinar on The False Cures of Burnout. So what exactly is a false cure? Well, not surprisingly, it's pretty self-explanatory. It's a cure or some type of action that you undertake to feel better that doesn't work. Okay, so in other words, you may feel as bad as you did before you started the cure, or you could feel even worse than you did before you started the cure. Now, in burnout, Freudenberger, who is the Freudian psychoanalyst who identified the burnout phenomena, noted three common false cures used by his patients. The first one probably doesn't come as any surprise. Alcohol. Alcohol is often used by people when they're trying to escape from feelings that they don't like or situations that are negative. There is a connection between the workload, uh, identified by the number of hours that an individual works in a standard work week, and the use of risky drinking. So in general, if you work over 48 hours a week, you are much more likely to engage in risky drinking behaviors. Now, risky drinking is defined as 14 drinks per week for women and 21 drinks per week for men. So there is a connection between workload, burnout, and alcohol use. And as I mentioned before, many people turn to alcohol to feel better because they're so stressed out. In fact, about 80% of the binge drinkers are employed. So binge drinking, risky drinking behaviors are often used by employees who feel overstressed and burned out at work. But again, you often feel a lot worse afterwards. Drug use, both of illegal, illegal drugs and over-the-counter drugs, is also a common way for people to self-medicate and escape from their feelings of burnout. In fact, about 38 to 50 percent of workers' compensation claims are related to substance abuse problems in those employees. And just like 80% of binge drinkers are employed, about 75% of substance abusers are employed. So there is a very high percentage of workers who are turning to alcohol and drugs to self-medicate. And due to the high stress levels of work, there are definitely ways that people uh, used to try to overcome feelings of burnout. Now, the third false cure of burnout is going to surprise you, and that's the work itself. Workaholism, or compulsive working. Workaholics think about their jobs even when they're not on their jobs. If they're at a family event, they're thinking about all the work they have back at their office. Ironically, particularly for high achievers, when you burn out, your productivity goes down. So high achievers work harder because if they work harder, then their productivity is going to go up. But the problem is because the way that burnout affects uh, your body and your neurological connections, the productivity actually goes down the more you work. Now, we know that there are anonymous support groups for alcoholism and uh, narcotics and other substance abuses. There is also workaholics-anonymous.com, which focuses on helping workaholics to overcome it. But again, these are the top three false cures of burnout. Alcohol, drug use, and workaholism don't work to overcome your feelings of burnout. So all of these false cures are related, as I mentioned before, to a psychological removal from the situation that's causing your stress. This is the second half of my BDOC model, or Burnout During Organizational Change model, that I developed. And the first thing that people do once they identify that they are burned out is to either 
physically or psychologically remove themselves. This is where the false cures of burnout come out. And if you succumb to false cures rather than proactive cures, you're never going to get out of that burnout cycle and to go into the next stage, which is self-knowledge and acceptance, and then finally a revised psychological contract with your employer. So why specifically don't the false cures work? Well, there's a few reasons. First, as I mentioned, they represent escape from the situation as well as denial. So in other words, I'm just going out to have a drink and I got smashed, but it has nothing to do with my burnout. Anytime you engage in a false cure, you're denying how you feel and trying to escape from that situation. But the problem here is that what you're doing to feel better through the use of these false cures is based on emotions. And these emotions do not really reflect sound problem-solving strategies to overcome the burnout. And as I mentioned, false cures don't work. So when they don't work, the feelings of cynicism and paranoia that are so closely associated with burnout tend to increase. As I said before, false cures may not make you feel better. In fact, they don't. You may not even feel as good as you felt before you used them. In fact, you can feel worse. So I think we've pretty much established that these false cures of burnout don't work, and there's a wide variety of false cures as well as reasons why they don't work. But I need to leave you with one final warning about a potential danger zone. Many people, when they first admit that they're feeling burned out, begin by using positive, proactive, problem-solving based coping mechanisms, which is great. So if you're doing that, you might think, oh, hey, I don't have to worry about it. I'm never going to go succumb to these false cures. But here is my warning. As the external stressors around you increase and your perception of them as being stressful increases, even though you may have started out on the right track with proactive coping mechanisms, you will become much more likely to resort to using false cures as a way to overcome your burnout. So watch and be careful. Your next question is probably, well, okay, Jerry, I know not to use these false cures, but how do I overcome burnout? What are some of the positive cures? And that will be included in our next webinar.